Mr. Paradise, Pickin' Paradise, this is episode 8 of the Lot Picking Belt Ride Along series, and it's been about three weeks or more since I've posted a video. Uh, a couple reasons for that, I had some family in town and extremely busy at work, but it's also to let everyone take a break and practice and catch up and get up to speed, and also to let newcomers come onto the subreddit and uh, discover lock picking and then kind of catch up and go through all the previous episodes. So if you haven't watched the previous episodes, then go ahead and do that. They're linked to a whole story or series in my YouTube channel, but um, you can just look through the past posts if, that, if that's what you're doing. So hopefully today is going to be a quick one, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you guys some tips on the 1100s. Now if you've seen any of my past videos or see me on red a little bit you should know that I I go through the 1100s fairly easily uh, but it's not like that for everyone and it wasn't like that for me in the beginning so I'm going to share some tips and some advice with you guys on how to get really good I never had to progressively pin and there's no shame in progressively pinning uh, it's actually a really really good way of learning and you actually learn how to take the lock apart and how to make it better and how to make it pick more interesting as far as like throwing spools around so today I've got this one pinned up with three pins and I have <clears throat> the pins right here. I've just mimicked these so that way you, we can see what's inside and it goes left to right. So this would be pin one, pin two, and pin three. Uh, this is the key for it so we can kind of see the bidding. It's only the first three pins, okay? So what I'm actually going to do right now is take just a little bit of time and throw the pins inside the core so we can see what they look like with the key in there and maybe even with the first spool so we can kind of understand what's going on in the lock. Because if you understand what's going on in the lock, you're more likely to be able to pick it. So. Uh, Here's this, and if we go ahead and insert the key, and I love the way those go up like that. I just every lock I pick, I look at it. So now we can see they're in there. So if we that that means they're at the shear line, okay? That's going to allow this to rotate. So once we pick them into there, it'll rotate. Now if we push these back down and we go after the first one, which is a spool in this case. We grab that spool and we stick it in there. Now we'll know what it's like when it's in the resting state. So we're already in the middle part of that spool. So as soon as we set these other two, which are serrated, we have three serrated driver, uh, three serrated key pins with two serrated standards and one serrated spool. So that's what we're going to be picking, and we're going to pick that lock in just a minute. I've got this core identically in the in the 1100 that's on in the vise right now. So that's what it's going to look like in its resting state. So we're going to need to pick this until it meets shear line, and then boom, that shear line. So we're not even going to. Feel, we we will feel one serration if we look at that I'm trying to get it show up in the video if we look at this boom there's that serration and then it's going to go to shear so it's going to hit that one serration first okay second one we are going to fill See how many serrations we should feel. Two serrations, I think. I think we're gonna get two serrations off that. We're gonna fill two serrations. And then it's gonna be picked a shear. And then this will make the ro the core rotate and sit up against this spool. And then the spool will need to pick and it'll get caught on the one serration. And then it should go ahead and pick open after we pass the bottom of that serration. So, uh, and you can play with those and you can mix them all around and put them wherever you want. Uh, about progressive pinning, 
uh, I would suggest you go ahead and remove uh, the key pins that you're not having in there, but technically you don't have to. You just have to remove just the drivers and the springs uh, and you can leave the key pins. But if you remove the key pins, then you can kind of get a better feel of really what's going on in there. Um, but again, I think it's really good practice to do that and then go through and then just play around with them. <clears throat> now, a couple, couple tips to the 1100. Light tension, okay? So everyone knows, or if you've been doing any research on them, then you know that they require light tension. So I'm gonna try to get my tension finger in here, in frame. With the correct lighting. Uh, there. Ooh. Okay, so I think that lighting is okay. So let's just go ahead and give it a pick and then I'll go through tips. So we're gonna go in and we're gonna get pin one here. A little click. Hang on two. That was three, was it a little serrated? Round two. And it dropped open. Okay, so I think what I did is I picked that spool first. So let's go ahead and rotate that back, lock it back up, and then <clears throat> See what we got. So here's tip number one, okay? So why does it require light tension? Okay, I personally think it's because the springs in there are really, really, uh, they're perfectly matched. So if you have too much tension, then those springs and the core binds because the springs and the driver pins are just the right length to sit there. So you don't need much pick pressure up and I think that's one of the contributing factors. Uh, right now, as I'm thinking through this, it doesn't really make that much sense, <laughs> but I do think it is. Uh, nonetheless, it requires light tension. You can put a little bit heavier tension, but usually light tension, and that's enough to hold a piece of paper on the wall, and that's about it. If you apply slightly more, then you can get a little bit more of a um, prominent set, especially on the serrated and the um, standard pins. So now that was a front to back pick. Uh, another interesting thing that you can do uh, picking any lock, but especially when you're progressively pinning, um, sometimes there's no direct binding order. There is, but you can kind of fudge it a little bit. I've already played with this one front and back and I can pick it in both directions. Um, but if you go back to front, you get a little bit of a different uh, feel. So I would suggest you doing that while you progressively pin. So we're gonna go all the way to the back, like all the way, and then we're gonna come up and we're gonna grab that, hook that first, that third key pin, and then we're gonna let the, the, the pick slide down. Oh, I'm gonna let it slide down over it. I'm trying to watch the video and pick. Okay, now I'm at the bottom of that third one. Okay, so I applied a little bit heavier tension so we could hopefully hear that. So we heard that and we've seen the core rotate. Now that, my friend, is a set pin. Now if I feel that key pin, and I feel it, oh, it was not, unless I'm on key pin two now. I was on key pin two. Uh, so back on key pin three, if you feel that, it's nice and firm. I mean, I can put a good amount of pressure on there and let me try to, I'm gonna reset it and just get pin three for you guys. Go to the back, coming up, and now we're gonna grab that third pin, that third key pin. We're on the tip of it now. I'm gonna set it. Set. I'm not gonna move my pick. I'm gonna show you how much pressure you can apply quite a bit of pressure and not overset that pin. Like I am cranking down right now. 
I wish we could see how much uh, pressure was on my, look at the whites of my finger right there. I'm pressing down on the, key, the third key pin. Uh, there, I finally got an overset. Okay, so one of my tricks to the 1100s is once uh, it feels kind of tight, but it's not gonna move anymore, that's the set key pin. So instead of trying to feel for that Instead of trying to feel for that rattly key pin, I just feel for a nice firm, okay, bouncy, 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 no feedback, that one's set. Come up to the key pin two. And that's set. Okay, I'm pushing down, it's set. I'm gonna go to peak key pin one. Okay, so I've lost it there. Um, Alexa threw me off mm -hmm. and picking on camera threw me off. Okay, false set. So keep in three and then two and now one. And if you feel it, it's gonna feel tight, but you gotta bounce a little bit and then let, now we're picking up the feedback. Now you can see it rotating backwards. We don't want too much uh, pick pressure here, okay? Because if you put too much pick pressure, you'll overset it. Okay, so my tension tool slipped and it's because when I was picking the spool, the second key pin dropped and I had to go back to it. So I went back to the second key pin and I set that and when I did, the lock opened, but it uh, such light tension made my tension wrench fall out of there. Um, so light tension, feel for those firm key pins, progressively pin it, and uh, another Keynote is sometimes people pick these, and I recently picked a few yesterday. Uh, that when I picked it, I was like, kept picking around, picking around, picking around. I'm like, well, it all feels set. Oh, turn and apply a little bit more pressure uh, on your tension hand because it's open already. You just got to rotate the core. It's because that heavy uh, spring in the actuator does that to us. So Another key thing is, or another tip, if you want to avoid that pitfall, which isn't that big of a pitfall actually, uh, if you leave the shackle open, I've heard that you don't have that problem. Well, let's, since I tried it, let's get it on film. Okay, fall set on that spool. Rotate that spool back. Yep, there's no prick. Uh, so, yeah, if you leave the shackle open, there's no actuator spring pulling on the core. So as soon as you pick it, it will fall right open. So you guys can try that and see if that helps you learn these 1100s and uh, progressively pin them, take them apart, put them back together and enjoy it.
and I do appreciate everyone, you know, watching the videos and the positive feedback and the sharing the videos. And we're going to do a follow up on this hopefully in one week just to see how everyone's doing. And we're going to pick the blue one. And that one it has a little bit of a better bidding. Uh, be, be sure to pay attention to your bidding on the key and and where and where and what that looks like uh, as we noticed on this one the third one we barely had to pick up right it was just one little bitty click so it was almost a zero lift and zero lifts can really play havoc on you so uh, practice and next week we're going to get the blue one five pins it's a stock lock a stock 1100 and we'll pick that and after that we're going to maybe start tackling the challenge lock but uh, for you who have already kind of built going up through that direction, uh, check out Den Brass, uh, his videos on the how to make challenge locks or how he makes his challenge locks really shows you a master at work and it shows you how quick and efficient he is at it and how simple it can be. Uh, so don't be intimidated by it. Don't be intimidated by the 1100s. And I appreciate all the, all the positive feedback. Thanks for listening to me ramble and keep picking.